Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Riverbend Discovery Center. As always, my name is Leaf and it is so great to have you guys back here once again for a little bit of a quicker episode today. I hope you guys don't mind. It's just a little think the snack on when you're going about your day. Today I really wanted to work on a African sulcata tortoise exhibit. So this is essentially just like a mini exhibit that's going to go right on the side of the entrance queue for our like primate island crews and stuff like that. Oftentimes when you actually do see some kind of tortoises, they're more so found in like these kind of dirt pits. This one is loosely based off of the stone zoo one. Um, it's not really the best one, but you tend to see like a lot of zoos with these kind of like you know, throwing some things into a habitat, like a dirt field, and then calling it a tortoise habitat. They don't really require all that much, which is exactly what makes them, like, perfect for zoos like this, you know? When you're making, like, lower-budget zoos, you gotta understand lower-budget animals, and tortoises really don't require all that much. I know there might be some people who will disagree with me on that and say, like, oh, we gotta give them the best care that we can, but listen, we make do over here, over at Riverbend. So, one of the things that we actually actually do kind of exemplify over here is a lot of work when it comes to kind of like makeshift enrichment and we'll actually get there when we do get there i just want to complain for a little bit right now that this was literally the worst habitat to build i know it's about the size of my foot but i don't really care this was such a pain to build strictly because of the fact that it crashed seven times on me like this entire habitat just crashed seven times and it isn't even because of mods it's because of like you know when you're building too many wood pieces in one single area it like crashes if it like takes too long to calculate and because since it's all like traversable area and whatnot it just gets to be such a huge pain so that's my main issue with this habitat and kind of why it's a little bit short over here i wanted to kind of do something like along the lines of you know get the whole entrance to the river cruise all set but we'll probably save that for later down the line when i actually do um rest off from this entire exhibit because i was extremely angry we also do give them a little bit of shelter in the middle of that nothing crazy nothing too themed i really wanted to make it look like you know it was kind of thrown together and we actually do a lot of work with the rocks over here as well we use a lot of the stone pebbles just to line everything up make it look pretty good and that's essentially the vibes that we're going for i think it does crash around here i want to say um yeah so maybe we might have to redo this i'm not entirely sure but hey listen no skin off my nose this is all part of the experience boys so with all that being said you can just see how long it takes for me to place that stuff down right there and you saw it just crashed right there but in the meantime i kind of go back i delete some pieces i make sure that i'm able to actually place stuff in here and I think we actually fix it going forward from there. So one of the things I did want to emphasize over here that it is a little bit more of a drier habitat. You know, you wouldn't really see too many keepers watering over here. So I do make use of the drain grass and the lighter gray, like the slate-ish, I think you could kind of call it, periwinkle grass. It actually fits the drain grass extremely well, so that's really awesome to see. Especially if you're building a lot more taiga or desert areas, that periwinkle is going to be your baby right there. But still, I do want to integrate a little bit more green, so we go through and use the cowberry bushes, crowberry bushes, sorry, um, in order to kind of bring that pop up again. So, of course, as I was always saying before, bamboo is probably your cheapest resource over here for some nice, quick, effective theming. So, that's oftentimes what you'll see in realistic zoos. Well, not even realistic zoos, real zoos. You would see a lot of bamboo being used in order to demonstrate a lot more theming. We actually use some of these logs. I forget who they're by, but they are credited in that little row right in front of the lynx habitat. Um, I do have a whole kind of area dedicated to like all the blueprint makers, so definitely do check that out if you do get the file pretty soon. Um, I'm not sure when I'll upload it actually, I think I want to get a couple more habitats done before I put out the first version, so keep your eyes peeled for that. The next episode is actually going to be one of my favorites, so I hope you guys are excited for that. We do like an entire monkey house, and it's just really freaking fun, but moving on from here, we actually do 
integrate a lot more of these drier plants. I use the Triordia grasses from the Australia pack as a way to kind of make it feel like it's a lot more weedy. And yeah, it just feels a lot better when it comes down to that. So one of the things over here that we do start to see is the enrichment and cheap enrichment indeed it is. So a lot of the times you'll see tortoises use stuff that they could push around or root through. And that's why I integrated those firehouse balls you would often see like keepers tuck some hay in there or something. Maybe even some kibble for the tortoises who really knows. But also one of the things that they do are make PVC pipe treats. And essentially what you'll see i also make a plunger for no reason i thought it'd be really funny so hey maybe we can do a custom bathroom later down the line who knows i hear those are the shit but moving on through here i integrate these um comma pieces and i was like why isn't it turning black but it turns out i was looking directly in the sun but i integrate these over here and basically you would see keepers stuff food in there and then the tortoises would push it around and try and get the food out and I also make heaters as well. I really want to have nice areas for the tortoises to kind of come over here and get warmed up. So I integrate the heaters right under those and they actually fit under it perfectly. So that's actually very fun to see come out into play. So we do integrate that. And I think that is more or less it. I do some other cheap theming around here. I throw the hedges over here, but my buddy Sam was telling me, listen, it ruins the view of like looking into the primate islands. So I was like, all right, sure. So I throw a piece of bamboo there instead. You know, you can never go wrong with the bamboo. Now moving on through here, I integrate a few more cowberry bushes. I integrate a few more drier grasses and I throw a piece of bamboo right there as well. And with all that being said, we're pretty much done right there. Um, and we're on to the B-roll. So with all that being said, I really do want to thank you guys so much for stopping by, checking out the video. If you watched it all the way through, I really do appreciate it. If you guys are new here, I just wanted to welcome you guys over to the leaf pile. We're getting such a huge influx of people over here and I'm so happy to see all the new faces down in the comments below. You guys always make my day. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Go check out Nick's African Sulcata Tortoise mod. It's really awesome, and it's like probably one of my favorite tortoises ever. But with all that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.